Thank you so much. We do have a good, good father, and it is the most perfect relationship, the only relationship that will fill our hearts, our souls, and guide our lives exactly where we are supposed to be. It is always a blessing to be with my brothers and sisters, worshiping. Hi to those online as well. I am Pastor Mo. If you do not know me, uh, we are glad to have you here. We have a little welcome desk out there. Please make your way that way. We have a special little gift for you. Um, if you are with us online, we also have a QR code, or if you're here sitting in your seats, a QR code down below. Great way to find out more about us, connect, and to also receive a free Starbucks gift card, so not too shabby. Uh, why don't we stand up now, say hi to everyone, hi to those online. You can hug, fist pump, shake hands. Whatever's comfortable for you. Hey, you're not forgotten. I see you, Ben. All right, let us now, let us center our hearts, give all of ourselves. If you are weighed down by things, if you are thinking about things, I want you to let that go. This is a time we are in the presence of God. I want you to receive all God has for you today. It's a special Sunday. We have some people sharing their testimonies and experiences with God on an ASP trip. And I just want you to be fully present because I really feel God's spirit has something for all of us today. It's great being with you guys here this morning. We're going to start by uh, clapping and singing together. There you go. This song is called Echo. Night is falling, when fears come, still you're calling me. When faith is lost and I hope exhausted, you'll be my strength. When my mind says I'm not good enough, God, you're enough for me. Amen. Friends, you please bow your heads and pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you. 
for gathering us here today together. For we know that you call us to be in community together. And we know that wherever two or more are gathered, that's where you are. So Lord, thank you for being with us here today. And thank you for the testimonies that we're about to hear this morning from members of the ASP mission trip. What a blessing that is to hear how you've worked in their lives, Lord, and help us to see how that might reflect in ways that you are working in our lives. Help us to be open to that. Help us to hear your voice in that message and in the scripture and in the music. And it's in your son, Jesus Christ's name that we pray. Amen. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soil I now surrender, you are breaking new ground. So I yield to you and to
Thank you so much. Uh, you may be seated. Beautiful job and beautiful words. In the crushing, in the pressing, God is always in the process of making new wine out of us, of wanting us to surrender our lives fully so that we can not only live out the true purpose for which we've been created and share the amazing talents God has given us, but in that process of making new wine out of us, our lives are so much richer, they're so much fla more flavorful, they're so much more alive. We truly know what it means to live when we surrender to what God is doing in our lives. And we have some special people coming forward today to share their story. When we were at Appalachia Service Project this year, they're going to share how God kind of crushed them and moved them into spaces that felt uncomfortable, and yet they saw God's presence along the way in amazing ways. And so uh, Appalachia Service Project is where a project where you go and make homes uh, safer, drier, and warmer for those in the Appalachia area. And so we are in Virginia, and so it's a blessing to, to be able to listen to these stories. Our gospel message comes out of Matthew 25. And so really, this is a parable, but Jesus is telling a bunch of stories at this time. And they are actually all stories that speak into what is to come. And Jesus is calling us into account to think, are you living your life as though you know the end of the story? Are you today, in what you do, in how you treat those around you, in what you do with the resources, the time, the talents you have, are you living in a way that you know that one day Christ will come back and what we have done here and now impacts the kingdom to come here on earth? And so this is the message that Jesus is speaking into and calling us to reflect on our own lives as we hear this. So let, let us have God's spirit move and open our ears to hear what God has to say to us today. Good morning. Our reading today is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, beginning with verse 35. For I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? Or a stranger and show you hospitality? Or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth. When you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Oh, you know, Hebrews 13, I couldn't help but think of that as well, where it says, if we open ourselves up and provide hospitality to a stranger and care for those whom we do not know and God puts before us and we see a need, that some of us, by doing so, have entertained angels. You see, the beauty of this parable and this story is that the people were living their lives in a way where they didn't even know that they were encountering the very presence of God within the people they were caring for and serving. And that is the beauty and the mystery of how God works in our lives. So I would like to welcome up those who have um, said yes to sharing their story and testimony. So we have Victoria Reagan and Trey Darnell, some amazing people, and Carrie Helton. And thank you so much. I will let you take it away as you, here we go, get you all set up as you share your stories with us. here and give you a testimonial about ASP. It might sound like a commercial. That's too good to be true. Because quite honestly, it was. Our theme for the week was Love Strong, and we did just that. I could talk for days about the ways God placed his hands and feet and carried that out within each and every one of the 28 of us on this year's trip. I was blessed with the most amazing, thoughtful, humble, and joyful work crew and family as you see up here in the most expected beautiful ways this week. 
I began my trip filled with anxiety, frustration, and doubt, finding myself asking, why am I here? What are my true motives and goals for this trip? And I actually shared that internal anxiety with my crew, desperately begging God on the side of the highway to see me through the week because it was too late to turn around and go back home. Mm -hmm. A few weeks ago, Pastor Kendall actually shared a sermon that resonated with me. And I actually connected my feelings of anxiety directly back to this moment. And I decided to vocalize that anxiety. I leaned on my crew, whom some had only known for a matter of hours. Through the week, I learned to give myself and the people around me grace because not every single moment is perfect, and neither are we. We just need the confidence that God's presence is inviting us to vocalize our fears and anxieties, and I needed to trust that God knew just what he was doing when our work crew was formed. For morning devotions as a group, car rides filled with the most random questions, 6 a.m. bathroom chats, God's beautiful landscape to work within, and everything in between, I felt the presence of God's peace and understanding flowing in and through me more and more throughout the week. I'm going to get pretty raw here and share that I actually had the worst panic attack of my life two hours and 45 minutes into our week-long trip. Typically, I suffer those in silence, but I felt something, someone, telling me that I needed to share, even with the people in a car I barely knew. So I shared, they helped me, and continued to cheer me on all week long, and I'm forever grateful for that. Ever since, I've actually been reciting this verse on repeat from 1 Peter. Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. And that actually became a theme for my life. Uh, I actually ended up writing it on the roof, Perlins, as you see up here. Um, I had no idea what Perlins were before this. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I put it on the Perlins because it served as a purpose and a reminder that even under the surface, God was watching over us and he'd pull us up out of our comfort zones no matter what. And that he would meet me and can meet you right as you are. This was my first mission trip ever and actually second time serving ever. On the car ride down, Jen Prine, our crew lead, asked our group to do Wednesday morning devotion. Hesitantly, I was like, yeah, I guess I could do that. And then I quickly said, as long as someone will come up there with me, because I was afraid. Um, I've never prayed alone in a group full of strangers, uh, albeit 40 of them. Well, Tuesday morning rolled around, and clearly a little nervous, another kid from another group got up and spoke the words exactly that I needed to hear to push me to do the same thing Wednesday morning. Uh, thankfully, Darren Rowley agreed to come up and read with me. Jen pre-wrote our morning devotional, prayer included, so all we had to do was get up there. But it was still terrifying. After Tuesday's morning devotion, I asked God to give me the grace and words to pray aloud for the first time ever in a group setting. And this year, I've taken a lot of steps in my faith, questioned a lot of things, asked God a lot of whys, and why he's placing me in these situations. But I learned that I actually need to ask God what. What is God teaching me? What is God asking me to do? After a lengthy bathroom chat with Pastor Mo, asking how to pray, I learned there isn't really a right way to pray. There isn't an outline. And if you know me, I'm kind of a girl for outlines, for plans, and checklists. And I just needed to trust that God knew what was coming and he knew what my purpose was. And then he'd help me find a pr greater purpose beyond myself. And he did this week. So I actually asked Jen if I could rewrite the prayer and prayed aloud in a group for the first time ever. And this is how it went after. So clearly, it was pretty good. I spent the week doing things that scared me. That included getting on a ladder of the unstable roof and just getting on a ladder alone. The moment I stepped on that homeowner's land, I felt the presence of the Holy Spirit and God's protection, and I knew that I'd be safe. If I heard myself say that a year ago, I probably would have rolled my eyes out of my head and thought that I needed to do this on my own. My crew was filled with the exact people, personalities, love, and support that I needed, the ones that God knew I needed. 
Some of us spent the last 30 years of our life leaning into God's protection, and I was just learning to lean into mine. Over the course of the week, my cup was filled in ways that I could never explain, and I'd find myself singing a song by Andrew Ripp called Fill My Cup. I'll spare you here and skip the singing for Josh. <laughs> On the way to our work site, we had the most beautiful landscape surrounding us, and around this random curve in the middle of nowhere, there was this natural spring, and gosh, it was beautiful. It was the best water I've ever tasted in my life. And I viewed it as God's way of saying that even in the middle of nowhere, even in the darkness, he would find a way to fill my cup and give me just what I needed. By the time the end of the week rolled around, I was beyond fulfilled with God's grace, presence, and peace like I'd never known or felt before. Our homeowners were the most gracious people I've ever met in my life, and their land exuded that graciousness. As soon as you walked on their grass, you felt like God was lifting you and holding you within his hands. And I knew that he gave me this house and these people and this group to encourage me to cast my anxieties onto him, to focus, to be myself. And if you're a mom, you know that isn't, you aren't always sure what that really looks like. But God did. He had a plan. He gave me my crew and the confidence to overcome my fears, trust in myself and God, learn to communicate, and so much more. My goal for this trip was to push myself beyond all comfort and trust that God had me. For the last 18 years of my life, I didn't really believe that. And I'm so grateful for the week of the people that I spent with, even beyond my work crew, all 27 of you. I pray that any of you listening to this today questioning your faith, contemplating serving, or anything else in your life, take a leap and listen to God's whispers because it's truly been the biggest blessing to find a home and place in God's house, here at Light of Christ, and in my life. You want to click one? Sure. Morning, everyone. My ASP journey started last year when I heard the 2022 ASP sermon, just like you are all listening to ours today. I never once considered going on ASP, even though I knew about it for a long time. Then I thought, why couldn't I go? I'm handy. I do repairs all the time. Plus, Rick Sullivan's running it, and I love that guy. <laughs> I'm going to go tell him I want to do it. After telling some church friends and Rick, they're all very supportive. Talking to Chris Cardis about it, he was in the same boat as me. Heard about it for a long time and never went. So we even had a sort of pact as going together for the first time. This was 10 months before the trip and I was already very excited. Once the trip got closer, however, going on the trip started making less sense. With where my wife and I are, are, with where my wife and I are in life, the trip was expensive and a lot of money for us this year. Making the trainings was difficult also, since I start, decided I wanted to go on the trip, I've signed up to be a part of a lot more and had obligations I had to miss being gone for one week. Taking a week of PTO, missing out on a week of summer, going on the trip just started making like less sense. There's plenty of reasons why I shouldn't go on this trip. I was tied down to the earthly world and not what God put into my heart last year. All this being said, I went, and I'm so glad that I did. God called me specifically to go this year. God just didn't want 28 people to go. He wanted 27 people with their own stories and backgrounds, plus Trey Darnell. Now, I had an amazing time with my van driving up there, eating some delicious food on the way up, and doing some fun activities. There's nothing like going on a trip like this, being surrounded by Christian brothers and sisters. I made great connections, and I can walk up to any person on this trip and start conversation. But at the end of the day, we are going there to work and connect with our families, and that is where God touched me the most and what I want to tell you all about. The, po the coolest part was connecting with my family. The homeowners consisted of a young couple in their 30s and a young teenage boy. When we first met the teenage boy named Offy, he looked terrified of us. We were the first group to work on his house up for the summer. Our group consists of people much older than him, and we are encroaching on his own space. He was very shy and took a while to warm up to us, but he did. 
He went from just kind of staring at us to going out to lunch with us. For the last two days, we got him to come with us and pick our lunch place so we can take him to some places he really likes. The thing that touched me the most of this week was the Friday we took him out to lunch. We are going to take him to Walmart, which is right by the lunch place, to see if he wants anything. Since I am closer to his age, more than anyone else in my group, I took the initiative to walk him around. I still know some things about video games and what high schoolers are into, and I was happy to maybe buy him a game. But when we walked past the games, he told me that he loves Yu-Gi-Oh. For those of you who don't know, Yu-Gi-Oh was something popular when I was a kid. Think of it kind of like Pokemon with the trading cards, but it didn't take off nearly as well. But I know what Yu-Gi-Oh is. I know the characters in the cartoons. I know some cards. I know how to play a bit, and probably more than I care to admit. <laughs> this random cartoon I watched 15 years ago was coming back to me. This is arguably the most useless knowledge I have in my head, but I have it. I don't think Pastor Mo in my work group knows anything about it, but I do. He was reluctant to pick something out because he felt bad, but he picked out some cards to buy. A couple people in our work group put some money together to get him these cards, and he was ecstatic. To get $50 of toys from Walmart doesn't seem like a lot for kids nowadays, but for Afi it was. We were driving back to Afi's home, and he wasn't opening the cards. I thought, that is a little strange. When I was his age, I usually couldn't wait to open stuff. But I didn't think much of it. He said he was going to show me the cards once he opened them, and I said I would love to. When we went back to the work site, I was in work mode. We had a lot to do outside, and off he went inside. I wanted to finish the job. We only had a few hours left, and I was very determined. Well, after about an hour, the heat got to me, and my determination was wearing down. I wanted to take a break and kind of felt bad about taking a break, so I told my work group that I wanted to go check in on Offie. When I went in the house to check on him, he was sitting there not doing anything with the cards in front of him. He waited that whole hour of me working for me to come inside so we can open them together. Now I still have a lot of amazing stories from this trip and some even more ways that God was a part of the week we went on, but this is the one I wanted to focus on. God called me specifically to be on this trip. This trip didn't make a lot of sense in my head or on my calendar, but it made sense in my heart. My specific talents and Yu-Gi-Oh knowledge were called to be on this trip. And friends, all I ask of you today is to listen to God and to listen if you are being called today like I was last year. Thank you. Bear with me a minute here while I get situated. Oh, yeah. Great. Okay. All right. I'll let you know. All right. Well, good morning, and thank you for this opportunity. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am Carrie Helton, and I would like to share with you how ASP changed my life. I have been a part of the LOC for about seven years, and I have been an active member in some of the ministries. And in those ministries, they have helped me find a greater love for Jesus in so many aspects of my life. But something always felt missing. I kept thinking, I know God has a bigger purpose for me. So I prayed and I prayed that he would show me what I was seeking. My, my prayers continued, and for the past three years, I prayed specifically about going on the ASP mission trip. Now, here's where the, now here starts the many God moments to my story. My prayers were not centered on only me participating in the ASP mission trip. My prayers also included my husband, Rob, as I so wanted to do this ministry with him. I continued to ask each year, and he continued to politely say no. But he always said, you go. I don't want to stop you from doing something that you really want. And that's one of the many reasons that I love him so dearly. But in my heart, I knew God wanted us to attend together. So begins my ASP story. God moment number one. Three years of praying, and this year when I asked Rob about the ASP mission trip, he said yes. Now remember that. We attended the meetings, read all the information, thank you Jen and Rick, and we were prepared to do whatever it was that was needed of us. Keep this thought in mind. I thought I was prepared. 
How hard could it be? One week of my time, help, some, help restore someone's home, make it safer, drier for them to live in, sleep in a bunk bed, share a bathroom with 12 other women. No, seriously, how hard could it be? I can do camping, right? There were 28 adults, and that's significant because all three of us have mentioned that there were 28 adults this year going on the mission trip. We were divided up into teams. Okay. Got to point that way. Okay. We were divided up into teams. Now, my fellow teammates, please take this as a compliment and totally out of love. So what do you get when you put five introverts and a cheerleader together? <laughs> you get team groundbreakers. I am honored to be a part of Team Groundbreakers. So if you are here, please stand for a moment. Luann, Lisa, Chris, Priscilla, and Rob. <laughs> Thank you to each one of you for your servant's heart. Joyful moments, tearful moments, laughter, and a whole lot of quirkiness. I am forever grateful to have been a part of the team and for each one of you. So prior to leaving for Virginia, LOC received notice from ASP of what jobs each team would be doing. Our team was assigned to a home where new concrete was needed. Okay, concrete, that doesn't sound so bad. But God had other plans for team groundbreakers. So God moment number two. When we got to the ASP in Jonesville, our team was assigned a different home project as the permit for the concrete was taking longer than expected. Our project was to take on the kitchen floor and put in new subflooring due to a refrigerator leak. Just wait, because you're gonna hear how God works. I wanna tell you about our family that we served. Our team was assigned to the home named Won't Back Down, and our homeowner is Ms. Jessica. Monday morning, I was jumping out of my skin. I was so excited to meet the homeowner, Ms. Jessica, and get started on fixing her floor. Little did I know what the day had in store and that I would learn so much about grace. We arrived at Ms. Jessica's to a home that needed a lot of love. Her home, like so many of the homes in the area, was in desperate need of repairs. Remember when I said at the beginning that I did all the prep work and I read all the information, and I was prepared. Nothing. Let me repeat that. Nothing can, can prepare you to witness poverty like this. Nothing. I could feel my heart trembling. And as I tried to process everything, how could I fix this? How could I wrap this woman in my arms and fix this? There had to be a way. Upon meeting Miss Jessica, the first thing you notice is that she's happy, kind and caring, a bit quiet, but she's happy. She has one purpose in life, to be a mother to her children and provide them with the care and love that they need. We got to know Miss Jessica during the week. She's had a very hard life. She lost both her parents before the age of 15. She was raised by an aunt and an uncle. She married a man that had so many addictions, yet she blessed him with two children, and she continues to bless this man each and every day. Her nephews live with her. Her ex-mother-in-law, who is 83 with dementia, lives with her. And her ex-husband's son from another woman lives with her as well. As I said, Miss Jessica has been pretty quiet since our meeting, but I took the time to really talk with her. I wanted to reassure her about what was happening and what we were going to be doing for the week, and I wanted her to know that there is no judgment from us. We are here to help in any way we can. I kept this communication open with her all week, just explaining what was happening because it was a lot. I was drawn to her to just want to comfort and take care of her. Demolition began, and after, and what was brought to light was not water damage, but termite damage. Extensive termite damage. This will lead up to another God moment further in my story. 
We let the ASP staff know what we found and we continued removing the flooring and the subflooring. Day two, Ms. Jessica is talking more with our team and I continue to have a connection with Ms. Jessica that is very hard to explain. During our talks, Ms. Jessica mentioned that she had filled out the application for ASP three times, yet this was the first year she submitted her application for help. Flashback to God moment number one. I prayed for three years. Let that sink in. We continued removing more of the floor, and it was apparent that her home needed much more than a new floor. God moment number three. Remember God moment one, that I prayed my husband Rob would come to the trip? Well, he happens to be a building inspector. <laughs> Upon seeing all the damage from the termites, he wanted to take a look in the basement, and that is where God moment three happens. You see, there's a section of the floor that should not be removed, so Rob let the ASP staff know that the current beam supporting the front of her home was being supported by less than an inch of coverage on the cinder block, as the majority of the cinder block, as you can see in the picture, in the basement was washed away. Won't back down just became a much bigger project. New beams, new joists, new supporting structures to support the beam and joists, and the list went on. And again, I was reminded how God works, for he put Rob in this house. And as life would have it, and we all know this, when it rains, it pours. That same day that we uncovered all of this, Ms. Jessica's hot water heater broke. This is where I looked up, up to God and I said, come on, God, how much more can this woman take? Ms. Jessica looked and informed her family that everyone would have to take cold showers because there was no money for a new hot water heater, and that included her 83-year-old mother-in-law. God moment number four, I looked at Rob, he looked at me, and I knew we were both thinking the same thing, hot water heater. We're going to buy her a hot water heater. So we wanted to ask the team if they wanted to contribute, and without hesitation, each one of them said yes. Bless you, groundbreakers, for again showing me the meaning of grace. So here's a picture of the old hot water heater, bird nest, mama bird, and eggs included and a picture of the new hot water heater. And we were able to sign it so that she would always see and remember the blessing that we gave to her. It happened to be my birthday during the week of ASP. Not a big deal. This week was about helping others. I have had plenty of birthdays, and skipping one wouldn't hurt. My team and my ASP family had other thoughts. Thank you all for the celebration. Now remember I told you in the beginning I have a strong connection to Ms. Jessica, and it's really hard to explain. It's kind of like I've known her my whole life. She caught wind of the fact that I was having a birthday. And she bought me a card that each of her children, and even Ms. Ginger, who is her ex-mother-in-law, signed. And the words that she wrote in this card truly made me cry. She gave me a plant because she said she knew I couldn't, hit. she wanted flowers, but she knew they wouldn't last the week, and a lovely balloon. Now, here is a woman who has nothing, and so little, and she's only known me three days, and she's blessing me and giving me a gift. I'm there destroying her kitchen, albeit to make it safer, and she's blessing me. I hugged her so tightly and we both cried. I thanked her and told her how I was supposed to be helping her and here she is helping me. And she looked at me and she said, you have given up your birthday and your time to help my family who you don't even know. I am grateful for you. Blessed. That is what I was. Blessed. We ended up having to redirect the repairs to Ms. Jessica's home. Rob and Chris were able to install the hot water heater Luann, Lisa, Priscilla, and I dug post holes for the next team to begin installing a new foundation. I remember throughout the last day, I kept repeating, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who gives me strength. 
and I truly needed that. For to get post holes is no joke. By the end of the day, we had set her home up for the next team to come in and continue what the groundbreakers had started. We had a very tearful goodbye. I wanted to stay so badly and continue working on Miss Jessica's home. And Miss Jessica wanted us to stay, for we had brought love and hope that she so desperately needed. This is a picture of Miss Jessica and her family. As I walked away, I crumbled and I sobbed. Remember at the beginning of my story how I thought, how hard could it be? Well, the hard part is walking away. And once again, I repeat it to myself. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who gives me strength. We didn't end up finishing what we had started. But we started what God wanted us to start. And that was bringing hope, grace, and love to Miss Jessica and her family. Miss Jessica and I have stayed in contact since I've returned home. And one of the first messages that she sent me has forever touched my heart. Part of her message stated, thank you for your prayers. They are appreciated and felt. You have all been so good to me and my family. And I'll never forget the love you all showed us. In a week's time, I felt more love from complete strangers than I have my whole life. Wow. I would like to add one last God moment to my story because this one is golden. When I returned to work after the ASP mission trip, many people asked why I looked so different. And I said, well, let me tell you about my week and about a woman named Miss Jessica. And just like that, God revealed my purpose. In one week's time, my life was changed. I was able to truly live out my prayer of being the hands the feet, and the words of our Savior, Jesus. This is the Facebook page for the Appalachian Service Project in Jonesville that you can follow, and you can see um, the progress of all five homes that we worked on, and you can also read the stories of all the teams that have been there. There are 20,000 volunteers needed in Jonesville for the number of applications for help that they are receiving. They currently have 8,000 volunteers. I would love for LOC to bring a group of 50 members next year. So would you please pray and really consider joining me next year for my birthday in the Appalachian Mountains of Virginia, where I know God will reveal himself to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your stories with us. Thank you. It is always amazing how we try to talk ourselves out of it or life comes our way and it feels like too much and yet God calls us to be somewhere and when we listen to that voice and we ignore the rest, that God does amazing things. So please prayerfully consider yourselves if you have, especially if you have any talent like that. God will still use us regardless. I was on the trip and I know that, but it is such a blessing when we can give those kinds of talents away as well. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you for your children who spoke out prophetically how you worked in their lives, how when they said, yes, here I am, Lord, use me as you will. You did amazing things, not only for children in the Appalachian Mountains and families that you care for deeply, but you did amazing things for those who went courageously to be your hands and feet, went with an open heart to accept whatever it was that you had to provide. And Lord, we thank you for your constant love and the way you continue to work in our lives in miraculous ways. Take down all barriers for those who are listening and hearing this message, that they too may say, yes, Lord, use me as you will. Amen.
So much. Oh, what does it look like to follow God wherever God is calling? And I couldn't help but thinking as that song was going on about the baptism I had last week with a young man, Jacob, nine years old, begged his parents. He wanted to be baptized. He had experienced VBS and was so touched and on fire for Jesus, nine years old. And as I handed him the candle and I said, this is the light of Christ. This is who you are to be in the world to see those who are ignored, to welcome those who are often forgotten, to care for others, to love them, to be the hands and feet of Jesus in the world. Who are we that God would choose us to make himself known to others? What a gift we have. And that is who we are as the church, and we need each other to do that work together. And so here at Light of Christ, if you would love to support what this means to look like Christ in the world, you could do that in different ways. We have QR codes in the front. We don't pass baskets around anymore, or we have those boxes in the back. Let us prepare our hearts as we come around the table. As we remember that this is a table that all are called, regardless of who you are, where you've been, or what you are even doing now. Jesus says there is room for you, that you are my beloved, and that I will make myself known to you in ways that are beyond your understanding, even through simple elements like bread and wine. On the night before Jesus gave his life, for all of us, he took bread. And after he had given thanks to God, he then broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. As often as you receive this, do it in remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus then took the cup of wine and again he gave God thanks. And then he gave it to his disciples, saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, and it has been shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you receive this, do it in remembrance of me. Now together, let us share in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
All are welcome to come and receive at God's table. If you're not able-bodied, let our ushers know we will come to you. If you need gluten-free or juice, let us know it, as you come forward. We also have elements in the back. If you prefer those, you could come up and we can bless them, or you can commune at your seat. And we also have railings. Feel free to sit and take a moment and just be with God.
Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this bread that gives us life and this cup of salvation. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that moves in and through us. And we thank you for choosing us to be your beloved, to give it all away and to come to live with, to show us what it means to truly live. May we step out into our baptismal covenant. May we step out to be your hands and feet in the world and your light wherever you are calling us. Amen. So there are some things I would love to share with you that are coming up. If you have been in the building at all during this week, you have seen a lot of amazing kids with talent practicing for what is upcoming, which is singing in the rain. And so our theater camp has been working, and I am always impressed at the short period of time they come together, and they are amazing. Literally, I told them we could take them on the road. They're that good. So please come and support them, check them out. It's free to come, but we do um, offer an opportunity for free will if you want a donation, if you want to pay back into this amazing ministry and opportunity. Uh, we also have some, you might have seen backpacks all lined up. We're having a backpack drive, and there are a certain amount of families that we said yes. We will, you are in need, we will provide your child with a backpack and everything needed to start the school year out right. And so we have about 50 backpacks still needed, and the families will be coming on August 5th. So I, I ask you to please consider prayerfully uh, grabbing one of those. We have a table out there, grabbing one of the uh, sheets or filling it out, saying that you'll take on one of the backpacks. They have different ages, and if you want a boy or a girl, all that good stuff. So, um, or you can register online for one as well, or register to just be there and be a greeter to help the families in, hospitality, lots of great opportunities to connect with those in the community. Um, we would love to also show you a little, little sneak peek into our mission trip in the Appalachian Mountains, so let us check this out. gift for all those who serve. 
you may have seen that picture of the spider. I found my true calling as to why I needed to be there. So Ron and Trey Darnell, who were on my team, were really great at fixing things and super handy. And there were wolf spiders and a whole nest, and those things are no joke that big. And I'm not too scared of spiders, so literally I was the protector of Ron with a huge shovel. And I said, Ron, this thing will eat my face before it gets you. Don't even worry about it. We shouldn't have Googled that they attack when they feel threatened. So, you know, we, I told them, don't worry, I'll, I'll, I'll protect you. So uh, let us stand now and receive our blessing. May the peace and the love of Christ that pass all understanding may guard your hearts and minds. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Darkness tries to roll over my bones. And sorrow comes to steal the joy I own. Brokenness and pain is all I know. I won't be shaken. No, I won't be shaken. Oh, my peace doesn't stand a chance.
breathe.